Hello and welcome to Ye Old Entertainment, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be talking about ARPGs and CRPGs and JRPGs and whatever the fuck Dark Souls and Elden Ring are in the realm of RPGs. Whichever letter strikes your fancy, RPGs. And the reason why I'm doing this is because after reading some of your comments in the comments section of my videos, watching a few other videos from some other YouTubers, and reading some other reviews, I feel like screaming. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! Is the whole world gone crazy?! Am I the only one around here?! Who thinks Diablo 2, Baldur's Gate 2, Chrono Trigger, and Dark Souls belong in completely different discussions? Telling by some of the comments you guys have left here in the comment section, it would seem so. Let's start with this comment from Guille Panqueque. Are you kidding? Diablo 2 was one of the absolute worst video games tagged RPG. It was boring, like I would rather build the pyramids instead of playing that. It was horribly repetitive, killing endless bots. God, it went forever doing the same stupid thing. I remember thinking about JRPGs, which are also ARPGs, he goes on to mention and comparing them to that mindless garbage and saying to myself, man, we look like idiots here in the West. Hmm, interesting. This is actually very interesting. It would have never occurred to me to compare Diablo 2 to, let's say, Final Fantasy 7, but okay. But it seems like Gia is not alone in this, so moving on to another one. So my good friend Renzo used to be a big fan of Diablo 2 back in the day, and he brought some of that love to my humble digital abode in the comment section. He also said he never got into Baldur's Gate 2 because he was too busy playing Diablo 2. So John Jones had this to say, You're missing out on a hell of a fun game. I love Diablo, but the Ball Spawn Saga will always be on top for me. Hmm, interesting. I also saw this video by Pam from Cannot Be Tamed, which is one of my favorite video game channels. And in this video, she ranked every CRPG she's ever played and, well, she threw Diablo 3 in there. Although it is noteworthy that in her video, the C in CRPG stands for computer rather than classic. And I suppose that could be a different discussion altogether. Still, I think it's... Mm, interesting. A few days ago, I was also browsing some reviews for Tainted Grail Conquest, the game that I'm currently obsessed with. This game is fucking awesome, by the way. And I stumble upon this guy's review on the game. Man, this guy Imatil sure is a straight shooter. In his review, he lists the things that are superb about Tainted Grail, and I think he absolutely nails all of it. But near the end of his review, he said this. But if you are up for a challenge, into storytelling, even in the Conquest mode, and like deck building, turn-based RPGs with an awesome lore, you should give it a go. And yes, that is true, but wow, I would have never thought of Tainted Grail as such, but well, yeah, it kind of is now that I think of it. I guess that what I find interesting about all these comments, videos, and reviews is that to me, comparing games like Baldur's Gate 2 and Diablo 2 feels a little bit like comparing a NASCAR race car driver to a Formula One pilot. Yeah, they are both sports, race car based disciplines even, but that's about where their similarities end. NASCAR and Formula One provide completely different entertainment. You may like one, but not the other. You may like both, or neither. But they both have their good and bad pilots. You have the Dale Earnhardt's and the Norm Bennings, and the Michael Schumacher's and the Pastor Maldonado's. Baldur's Gate 2 and Diablo 2 are genre-defining games. One only needs to take a look at the slew of games that have tried to imitate them over the course of the years. You have the Pillars of Eternity, the Pathfinders, the Tyrannies, and Sorias on one hand. Games that don't exactly try to hide their source inspiration. And then you have the Titan Quests, the Hellgate Londons, the Grim Dawns, Torchlights, Fates, and Adventures of Van Helsing's on the other. And to say that these games follow the tradition of Diablo 2 would be hell of an euphemism. Speaking of those, I'd like to go back to the first comment I showed you and to every other comment and video in which the author doesn't seem to like Diablo 2 too much because Baldur's Gate 2 or Chrono Trigger are better. They remind me a bit of the saying, judging a fish by its ability to climb a tree, which was supposedly said by this guy. Bullshit. Yeah, I know. Like I said in my answer to Guille Panqueque's comment, if you think Diablo 2 is repetitive and boring because you kill hordes upon hordes of enemies time and time again, I strongly suspect that you are not going to like Grim Dawn, Path of Exile, Hellgate to London, or any of the other games I've mentioned. And your issues may be with the subgenre rather than those games in particular. 
Let's take a look at the system of categories that I used to structure the reviews here on the channel for a moment. Now, I haven't had the chance to use it yet, but I also have an ARPG system. Thus far the only two ARPGs I've talked about extensively here on the channel are Shadows Awakening and Grim Dawn. But both videos follow the less structured The Old, old Gamer, Gamer Recommends recommend. format. When it comes to CRPGs, for me at least, character progression and leveling, gameplay and story and lore are the three most important categories. Each of those weigh 15 points, and they account for 45% of the weight in the review system. And then come Companions lore-wise and Companions gameplay-wise, with 12% each. But when it comes to ARPGs, things are, well, different. You have gameplay and character creation and progression as the most important categories. But then you have not one, but two item-related categories. You have items, which factors in drop rates, quality, tactical value, and class relevancy, and item optimization, enhancement, and creation, which refers to enhancements that you socket and enchantments with which you improve your gear. This is crucial in an ARPG, and that's something that you just can't get wrong in games of the subgenre. Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous is a CRPG, and while I didn't like it at all, how dare you? There's one thing this game absolutely nails given its subgenre, and that's the itemization. It's quite simply the best itemization I've seen in a CRPG. The loot is plentiful, but top tier loot that works well with your character's class and its role in the party is hard to come by. But some of those items make a huge difference when equipped. You have, for example, this belt, which improves your animal summons fighting capabilities. If you have animal summons and if your tactics revolve around them, then this belt is a must have. There's also shields that have auras that enhance everyone's DPS capacity. That comes specially handy for tanky type paladins or fighters. But ARPGs, well, that's a different story. Let's play Grim Dawn for a moment. Let's grab this level 68 warlord that has been collecting dust for a while. So, a warlord in Grim Dawn is a dual class, a hybrid of soldier and oathkeeper, both of which are melee oriented classes. And as such, there is no lack of melee damage skills and a bunch of mitigation skills. Now, looking at this talent tree, and this is crucial in ARPGs, I could already tell, provided of course that the description for the talents are accurate, more or less where I wanted to go with this character. And that also included the gear that I was going to be interested in. So there is this one talent that's called Righteous Fervor. This talent here and its synergies are the bread and butter of this build. And that is why I have this. Puncturing Assault Heavy Axe of Fervor. Which is nothing to write home about. But it is for me because it adds plus two to Righteous Fervor. And I also have this, Obsidian Plate Quiras. And that is most definitely not the best item one can have at this level on a Warlord. But let's, let's go to my stash and let's look at some of the stuff I have there. Take a look at this one, Devil's Cage Hallberg. Okay, holy shit, this is good. Okay, maybe this one's better than the one I have, but the Obsidian Quiras still provides a little bit more of what I want for an item for that slot. It adds plus two to Righteous Fervor, which is my main offensive skill, and it adds fire and chaos resistance, which is pretty fucking important in this game for the hardest difficulty level. Okay. Well, let's go out and find some trouble then. So, I have this friend who, in the interest of protecting his identity, we're going to be calling Eat A Lot. Well, for what must have been years, maybe even an entire decade, Eatalot did little more than work, eat, sleep, take shit, and play Diablo 2. That was his thing. And I swear, it didn't matter which day or at which time you went to his place, you'd always hear the taka -ta 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 of his paladin thrashing mobs left and right for hours on end. And I get it, dude. Game was fucking awesome. It had procedurally generated locations, procedurally generated enemy talents, and all the other stuff we've talked about in other videos. Most importantly, Diablo 2 nailed the itemization aspect of the game. In ARPGs, you need to have the right drop rate per rarity. Diablo 2 has broken, normal, magical, rare, set, and unique items. And, well, just like these items here, they also had interesting tactical value. As for gameplay, this, and Grim Dawn is just a sophisticated Diablo 2 with a twist, this is his jam. 
gameplay-wise at least. Although I think he's a bit more about typical in-game shit in ARPGs, you know, stuff like rifts, seasons, anything that's a procedurally generated challenge with a chance to get the precious loot. Or a carrot on a stick, as I see it. Now, I would think long and hard before recommending a game like Baldur's Gate 2 to eat a lot. Actually, I would never do that, because I know he wouldn't give a shit about talking to characters, taking decisions, finding different strongholds, and by the way, I already fucking know there's more than three freaking strongholds in Baldur's Gate 2, please stop saying the exact same thing on that video, please. The thing is that I can easily picture him writing off all the cool stuff that Baldur's Gate 2 has to offer as bullshit and wondering, where's the meat? And why are people still oh boying and oh wowing about this game? And his brother is not all that different. The man used to play Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Exen, Heretic, Quake. And he was 100% convinced that his taste in video games was varied. But hey, that's their jam. Theirs and lots of other people's. If it weren't, games like this one I'm playing right now wouldn't exist. So let's go back to our little discussion. So, of the three genres that we've mentioned at the beginning of the video, JRPGs are probably my least favorite. And I do think that games like Cedo Blade Chronicles are just overrated. Even if that game has, hands down, the most badassedest music track in the history of video games. But other games like Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VII, and Breath of Fire 2 are masterpieces in their own right. And the things I don't like about them are trademarks of the very genre. Heck, they're even trademarks of story-based Japanese entertainment products, I would say. Now, one of you roasted me a while ago, because in my Shadows Awakening review, I sort of equated ARPGs as a genre to Diablo 2 like games. And this is what he had to say. This is kind of stupid. You're only able to say that every RPG attempts to emulate Diablo 2 formula until now because of a twisted interpretation of action RPG that excludes everything that's not exactly like Diablo 2, except for this one exception that you arbitrarily included. I guess this is fair. And I only have this to say. Shadow's Awakening does not qualify as this one exception that I arbitrarily included. It's an isometric ARPG that revolves around killing hordes of monsters and collecting items, even if it goes on about this in a different way than Diablo 2. And while I think that this is fair criticism, I also think that the useful thing to do is to look at the context a bit. Shadow's Awakening is the same kind of ARPG as Diablo 2. Games like Dark Souls aren't. So, back in the mid-2000s, my co-founders and I had played a ton of Diablo 2. Like, like thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. And as we, over time, tired of the game, we looked at other action RPGs that we wanted to try out. You know, we tried out Dungeon Siege series and Titan Quest and so on. And we played those games too and enjoyed them, but only for dozens of hours rather than thousands of hours. And so this caused us to ask, why did we sink so much more time into Diablo 2? What was perfect? What made that game the best action RPG that had ever existed? This is, I think, the project director for Path of Exile. And all throughout this lecture, he also equates ARPGs as a genre to Diablo 2 style games. And while that might not be entirely accurate, it wouldn't have been useful for the purpose of his dissertation to bring, say, Dark Souls or Bloodborne into the discussion, or Tainted Grail, which is, like that guy in the review said, a, a car-based ARPG. So, I think that this comment is interesting, because I think that taxonomies have to be first and foremost useful. And when it comes to games, and especially RPGs, they have to help you decide if a certain game is for you or not. Because RPGs are not like one-on-one -on -one fighting games. As different as they all are, they all more or less appeal to the same crowd. I think that as different as it is from Diablo 2, Shadow's Awakening could appeal to my friend Italot, but I really don't think that Dark Souls or Bloodborne would. On the other hand, Sekiro was never labeled an RPG, although it does have many RPG mechanics, like choosing which skills and disciplines to train and which prosthetics to enhance and how. And I think Sekiro is a game that would appeal to 95% of those who like the Soulsborne games. So, while equating ARPGs to isometric Diablo-esque games may be reductive, I think that it is a lot more useful than using the term to throw in every game and its mother that fits the operative definition. So much so, in fact, that nowadays the Souls-like tag has become hugely popular, 
and that's because Dark Souls, whether you like it or not, was a genre-defining game. And there's a huge crowd out there that are always hunting for games that deliver a similar experience. And just like Titan Quest's reason to exist seem to have been to sate the thirst for more Diablo 2-like ARPGs, there's games like Mortal Shell that seek to do the same with Dark Souls. Now, Elden Ring is out, and it is an open-world RPG that distills everything that was good about Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. Well, almost everything. And throws in a few things of its own. And I'm actually curious about what people are going to call its genre in the future. And I'm also curious about your favorite RPG subgenres. Which one's your favorite? Do you think these genres appeal to the same audience? Do you think games like Diablo 2, Baldur's Gate 2, Chrono Trigger, and Dark Souls can be compared? And I am especially curious about this. If you like all of these subgenres, what would be your, I don't know, top five? If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thank you for watching all the way up until now. If you like what you're seeing in this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to avoid the usual YouTube shenanigans. Share the video, but most importantly, never stop gaming, but don't let gaming get in the way of your hopes and dreams. Bye, everyone.